everyone, and happy birthday to Daddy and Mrs. David, and happy Children's Day to the children. <laughs> I'm also a child, so happy Children's Day to me, since people will not answer me. <laughs> uh, well, I was told that I would give a short exhortation this morning, and I hope God will help me to pass across the message you would have me pass across. Uh, let's start with praying. Everlasting Father, King of Glory, we worship you for this morning. Lord, as we are here at your feet to learn, we pray that you minister to us. You help us to understand that which you, Lord, will have us to understand this morning in the name of Jesus. All that we will learn here today, O oh Lord, help us to be doers of your word, not just carers in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. Uh, well, I'm to speak to the children and uh, talking about uh, walking in faith and not by sight. Uh, passage is taken from First Corinthians five seven. Okay, sorry, I guess it's 2 Corinthians 5, 7, sorry. Okay, so it says, we live by faith, not by sight. So, saying that we live by faith and not by sight, I can remember that quite a number of times on this altar, we've been told that uh, as Christians, our currency, what we spend is faith. And if we say we live by faith and not by sight, that means that we are not moved by the things that happen on this earth. We are moved by the word of God. We are moved by the things that uh, God has, the promises God has given unto us. I would like to take a study from the life of our father of faith, Father Abraham. He's someone that we're told that he lived a life of faith. Someone that when God instructed him to do things, he did them to time. He didn't waste time in performing all those activities that God had, I mean, all those instructions that God had given him to do. Uh, the first instruction was for him to leave his father's house, his land, and move to another place, which he did and left with his uh, brother or cousin, Lot. And um, after that, we can see that he had a delay in giving birth. Uh, he was always bringing that to God and talking about it with God, and God always promised him. God gave him that, um, that, that promise, that comfort, that surely he would have his own child, and his children would be as much as he can ever imagine and all, which it also came to pass. He then gave birth to Isaac, and giving birth to Isaac, God then, to test him again, told him to sacrifice his son, Knowing the type of, well, we, we, we women, uh, if he had told his wife, she would have hindered him and her, but he didn't tell her. He then told his child, we have a journey to go, and getting there, about to sacrifice the child, God then told him to look up. Now, as children of God, if we have been told that we live by faith and not by sight, if um, Abraham was living by faith, I mean by sight, he wouldn't have listened to the instruction of leaving his father's land he wouldn't have listened to the instruction of going to sacrifice his child. But then he knew that God that was instructing him already had an hand plan. He's the one that knows the hand from the beginning, even before it starts. And that's why uh, if we say faith is our currency, it means we are surrendering all to Christ. It means we are letting everything go. Yes, we are educated. Yes, we are, have gone to school to attain whatever degree and all. But with whatever degree we have, we are still submitting ourselves, laying ourselves low to God, that, Lord, whatever you have me do at any point, that is what I'm willing to do. In a place of, okay, I'm going for a party or I'm going to work or something, I have dress that I want to wear, I'm still thinking of what to wear, and then God instructs me to pick a particular dress. I don't look at God and say, uh, you are not in town, you don't know fashion and all those things. 
I go directly to that dress, I pick it up, I wear it, and by the time I get to where I'm going to, I see the honor that dress will bring to me because God has instructed me to wear that dress. Because I've listened to him, there's a way it will pass away for me that I'll walk through. Now as children, we say walking by faith and not by sight. In our academics, if we say, uh, the, um, I have math exam. If I don't study that math, if I don't practice it, how would I know what my teacher has taught me? How would I understand? How would I pass the exam? If I say I want to become a lawyer, if I don't go to school to study law, then or go to law school and all, then how would I practice law? So if we say we are working by faith, that means there's a work for us to do. That means there are things for us to start with, which as kids, I will start from us surrendering ourselves, us giving our lives to Christ. Now, yes, we've been um, given back to by Christian parents. Yes, they bring us to church daily and all that. But it's left to us to then know that, okay, this is the God I want to serve. This is the God that has been preached to me. I need to surrender myself. I need to accept him as my Lord and Savior. When you accept God as your Lord and Savior, then he gives you the Holy Spirit that teaches you, that instructs you on things to do and things not to do. You um, read the word of God daily. You follow his teachings. Once they teach you in um, church, you go back home, you study that word, you meditate that word, you let it ruminate through you. That is what go, um, keeps you through the week. That is every morning you wake up, those are the works, those are the things that you need to do. Submitting yourself, surrendering everything to God, studying the word of God, meditating on the word of God, working according to those teachings, working according to those instructions that he has given to you. Yes, does it mean that uh, there will not be times where you will doubt? Does it mean that there will not be times when you worry? Yes, there will be times like that, but he has said we shouldn't worry. Uh, it's the Yoruba that is stuck in my head. Um, he said, I mean, if God has gone through the world, if he has walked in that path that we've walked in, that means that whatever it is we'll go through, there are things in the Bible for us to go to to pray, to read, to know how to take us out of that situation wherever we find ourselves. So we should uh, submit ourselves, submit our worrying to God, and as we submit all those things, it has a way to help us come out of them. It has a way to help us um, build our faith. Now, yes, um, it says if we have faith as small as the mustard seed, then we can tell the mountain to move and it will move. If I have faith in this table. That is why I'm resting on it. That is why my book is on it. That is why my Bible is on it. But if I don't have faith on it, I would just pack all my things and move away from it because I feel, okay, these things will pour away. But someone you have faith in, that is the person you are confident in. That is the person you can submit all things to. That is the person you can trust. That is the person that every time he instructs you, you wouldn't doubt, you wouldn't think twice. You always want to follow those teachings. You always want to follow those things he has asked you to do. Uh, then uh, looking at the life of Joseph too. Can you remember in Genesis 37, uh, he said he had a dream at age 17. And at that age, telling his parents, his siblings, I had a dream. They felt what do you mean and all. Then they sold him as a slave. He got there, but... The, God, the hand of God that rested upon his life made all that he did to prosper. Even the people he related with. Meaning that if I'm walking by faith and not by sight, all that I do, all that I am, is all to God. Everything, everywhere I go, that light of God has to shine in that place. I don't just go and I'm just the regular everybody. Something has to stand different. If probably in my attitude, in my spoken words, in my respect, in ways that I follow authority, then I know that, I mean, people then will know that, okay, there's something different. They called his disciples Christians because they saw that they acted like Christ. So as we children of God, we've submitted ourselves to God, then they should see that trait in us that, okay, truthfully, these people are Christians. They don't lie, they don't steal, they don't deceive, they don't do one thing or the other that is not meant to be heard of you. So uh, if uh, by the time uh, 
Joseph's dream was coming to pass that at 12, that age he was 37. If I had a dream at age 17, I feel okay by the time I'm 18 or 20, that dream should come to pass. But he had different journeys he went through. He had different trainings he went through. So as Christians, as children of God, yes, God has given us a word. Yes, there might be a time for us to wait and learn different things that will help us when we get to that place where God is taking us to. It doesn't mean God has forgotten us. It doesn't mean we should doubt him. It doesn't mean we should fall back and then go to other small gods that are not anything to him. It means that we should stay in that God, stay in him, stay in those promises, always pray those promises to light, always uh, meditate on those words. Let them form a picture in your mind that, okay, God has told me that at some point I'll be a governor. I don't just stay at home not going to school. I don't just stay at home not working, waiting till I become a governor. Well, if I become a governor and I've not gone to school, I've not done anything, what experience do I want to use to practice as a governor? So God told Joseph this. He gave him a dream until he was 37 before that dream came from age 17. That's some years gone. But all the things he went through trained him to be able to function properly as someone that would uh, help in the time of famine. Now they had famine plenty and not having plenty again. He, he didn't go through all the troubles of being sold as a slave, of going to prison. We didn't have the, um, the qualities, the skills, the characters to function as uh, the governor. So let's pray that God will help us at every point we listen to his instructions, we walk by his faith, and uh, when we get to where he's taking us to, we are able to profess his, I mean, show forth his life and function as his children. Thank you very much.